Hi and welcome to my studio. This is where all of my work happens. It's really hard for me not to be inspired by nature. It's around us all the time. I bring it in by having flowers around me. You just need to slow down and look. I have been doing this since I was a little kid. There are pictures of me two inches away looking at how something is constructed. How did that happen? When I was a, a child, uh, I had a real hard time learning to read. They didn't have a word for dyslexia, but most definitely that's what I was dealing with. I managed to learn to read and I kind of overcame the problems of dyslexia, but I did not enjoy reading. And then I became a flight attendant. And what do you do as a flight attendant? You work, work, work really hard, and then you sit around for two or three hours for your next flight. And I started to read then. The first person that I started reading all of the biographies of Colette. She's a French writer. She wrote a little kind of, well, she wrote Gigi, but it was little country girl stories. I was interested in her life and how she proceeded as an artist and, and became successful. Then I started reading about all of the Impressionists and their use of color and their nature, plain air painting. It was, so it was all about being outdoors in nature. What was I doing as a flight attendant? I was going to the museums and I got to see all of their work. Reading has become something that has uh, evolved into a great pleasure for me. Mostly this is where I work to do my metal work. Although it's an organizational center as well because I'm putting together, if I'm putting together kits, <clears throat> there's beads and beads and beads and beads forever. In all of the colors, I, I organize by color and um, there's all kinds of shapes. And, and of course, more beads over here. Uh, this is full of all seed beads and it's all by color. So I can just come in. I, a lot of times will kind of work out my palette before I ever start gathering things up. And then I'll just like start dumping things out over here on the table and eventually narrow it all down to what I want to work with. Another thing here that I got not too long ago is this little cart. And I just got it at Michael's, but it is, I can roll it around if I'm working at the bench over here or whatever. And as you can see, it's got my uh, disc cutter, shaping tools, my, uh, hot blow gun so I can uh, work with my pitch and there's other shaping tools down here so it's really handy and uh, it rolls around and uh, I've loved having it here. Then we have more beads! Piles and piles of more beads. that uh, various kinds of beads. Um, all of this is uh, semi-precious and, and pearls. And then most like down through here and under here is all glass, but different uh, shapes. And uh, this is all crystals, but Chinese crystals. Thought I'd let you know how I get from this to this. This is a brooch. 
here's your back and see it's got all that dimension the petals are really individual and doing their petal thing I've started a new project over the last couple weeks and um, this was my initial drawing I'm, I'm already starting to engineer how that is going to uh, fit together and be metal this uh, actual part right here will be sterling and then there will be another layer above this so more petals uh, that will be copper and I will be uh, coloring it with Prismacolor pencils and this is what I've done here that's how I've gotten all that color onto this metal because this is copper as well I found this picture the other day that has inspired me as far as color and this is the ocean right at sunset I found that bead that's inspired me those colors and that's where I'm sticking uh, to as far as my palette and I kind of obsessed about this one bead I want to use they're just amazing they have all these peacock colors in them and texture so that'll be this one and it'll be made out of beads the one that I'm constructing is sterling in the back so that'll be this part and then it will have another layer made out of copper that is part of what I'm engineering as I go to get that all to fit together and stay together to be able to make this and 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 have a pattern I went to my computer and I drew the pendant in the computer and then all I do is cut it out glue it onto my metal and I saw all that out and make that shape of course I had it for the copper portion as well you can kind of see the little tabs that are raised up here and cut out those will fold over the copper portion I took a class about oh god that must have been about 10 or 12 years ago with Sherry Jade and I made this workbench and I mean this thing is rock solid it's gotten a lot of wear and use over the many years I've had it and I love it in the center of most of my flowers I drill a bunch of holes all around um, pretty random just so they're fairly close together when I add the beads they uh, are in there real tight. I use a, a real strong nylon filament that called Fireline. I, it is so tough. That's what I like. I don't want. I want everything to be sound and, and secure. We're adding some beads now. So I'm just uh, filling in over the top of this mound in the center of the flower putting in my teeny weeny bees these are called charlottes and they are I believe the smallest beads as you can see very very tiny but I can get a lot of color build up with it overall it'll create a wonderful texture it's actually ready to go on to the backing but I'm not going to attach it until I've done the beadwork around it well I'm going to patina some things they were real nice and bright and shiny but I've sanded them and roughed them up so they've got a nice tooth to them now I'm going to with liver of sulfur and this is in preparation for doing my Prismacolor application pencils on the copper. Now this should turn pretty quickly. Yeah, there it goes. 
And that, these are a couple of hooks I made that I put on um, necklaces. And they're sterling, so they'll take a little bit longer to get dark than the uh, copper. But it's a magical thing. I'm gonna paint some gesso on my copper pieces that I patinaed a little bit ago. Gesso is sort of like Elmer's glue, a real thick substance oil and acrylic painters size their canvases with it. I'm going to give put it onto my metal to give it a base for my colored pencil. I'm to the stage where I'm applying the Prismacolor pencil to my metal. Now I've done a lot to this metal. I've patinaed it. I've, uh, well, I've cut it out and and roughed it up so it was like had a lot of tooth to it. Then I patinaed it, and now I've gotten gesso, several uh, layers of gesso on it, which will then hold the pencil. Now I'm using Prismacolor pencils, and they have a lot of wax in them, so uh, they. They develop this amazing depth of color. I that I think that's why I've fallen in love with them. Uh, just look at this. I mean, the amazing color that you can get, and then in in cooperation with the beads around it. So I'm um, I've made my decisions about my colors. I had planned originally to make this uh, more yellows and maybe into like a little bit of orange uh, but it's September and it's gonna be fall and I'm gonna want to sell this over the holiday season so I th I'm thinking I'm gonna make it more the oranges so I've made that decision and I'm gonna color both the front and the back and here I think I'm gonna make it lavender and uh, that'll go along with the beads I'm gonna be using with it these have a sort of an iridescence to them with orange so I've basically pulled everything down to my final colors because there's no change in this once you get it going this is the pendant back and I will flip it upside down over the top of a plum blossom beaded bead. I'm attaching my last beaded bead to here. So as you can see, I've, I've built these beads onto the circle. I'm on the last one, and that'll be these beads, which I'm excited about. I think they're really just amazing. Now the plum blossom bead is something that the Japanese have made for centuries. And for the most part, it's just a round little bead made out of beads. A few years ago, I started playing around with shapes. Started making that round little bead with all kinds of shaped beads. I do not think I have run out of shapes of beads to complete this bead. I, I think I'm up to about 20 different ways to make it. The discovery has slowed down a little bit over the last few years of how many ways to make it, but this past year I discovered another one. So, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to give up. This is going to keep going. I think we're pretty much to the end of this pendant and now it's going to be a necklace because I'm picking up my chain actually make some decisions about that this is a heavier chain and I'm kind of thinking that might be what I end up choosing I think it's um it matches the weight of what the pendant is then I have to decide what size of this closure and the lobster claw closure if I choose this chain I think probably the medium will be the good one. I'm so excited by the way Sunset Gathering turned out. 
Every piece of jewelry I create is a special part of me and it makes me so happy when it goes out into the world and a woman wears it and it gives her joy.